There are a huge number of options when it comes to the different sectors of the food service industry. Ranging from a pie in the middle of the night at a service station to a very expensive dining experience at a nice restaurant. Hotels and other tourist accommodation centres often have their own restaurant on site and those who wish to have their meal brought up to their room can order room service for a slightly higher price. In the past restaurants were connected to accommodation establishments but over time chefs wanted to branch out on their own so now we find restaurants all over the place on their own and they're not necessarily connected to accommodation at all. Obviously some people they're not looking to dine out every every day and spend a whole lot of money um, but they still want the convenience of getting someone else to do it so there's, there's a whole variety of different things. There's fast food, there's pizzas, there's, there's a whole variety of things that they change the nature of their product by perhaps using cheaper items on the menu, uh, less service or decreased service uh, or possibly to go for volume driving more and more people through so that they can make more of a, a margin on the volume. In the food service industry, it's hard to find anything to compete with the price and speed of the fast food outlets. They're well-oiled machines with an exact formula for every item. With such low prices and high setup costs, they depend upon processing through large amounts of customers on a daily basis. Closely related in the customer's mind to the fast food industry is that of the takeaway. These are usually much smaller operations and as customers take their food away for consumption, their venues can also be very modest. A typical Kiwi classic would be the local fish and chip shop and more recently many Chinese, Indian and Thai takeaway places have become available. We often expect to see food outlets along the street, but that's not always the case. So shopping can be a stressful and tiresome exercise. Retail shops can provide cafes uh, where customers can stop and take a break while they're doing their shopping. They'll be able to revitalise themselves, have a think about what they've seen and hopefully go back and make some purchases. When you're going to a movie theatre or theme park or other attractions, there are generally other stores available with food or beverage outlets. Typically, everything is overpriced and you can usually pay twice as much at a theme park or an attraction than you would at the fast food outlet. But the food and drink adds to the experience. And just imagine a movie without popcorn. It's just not the same as it. Petrol stations offer food and beverage options. Plenty of snacks, sandwiches, sausage rolls, cakes, etc. All great things to pick up in the middle of a long journey. Often these items are overpriced, but at 2am in the morning, when you still need to travel a few hours, nobody's going to be asking any questions. Eating and drinking takes place every day. And it's not always convenient for people to stop at a restaurant or fast food outlet, especially if they are at a wedding, exhibition or conference. Catering for events has become a major section of the food service industry. It often requires large amounts of food to be prepared and delivered to customers all at once and at a high standard. Napoleon knew that an army marches on its stomach. And in today's modern world, that hasn't changed at all. People who are at work and who eat well are more likely to work well. With this in mind, the industrial catering sector of the food service industry was born. This can operate either as an in-house operation or through independent catering companies. In its essence, it works to provide food and drink to people in their workplace. Very similar to industrial catering is welfare catering. Meals are provided and delivered to students at educational institutes, the military and people with social needs. Very different from this is the licensed trade sector. The licensed trade has to do with public houses or commonly known as uh, pubs uh, and restaurants and bars and licensed clubs. They are restricted on the, the sale of alcohol and they have been granted a special license to sell a product. Transport catering is unique. 
This is the business of serving food to people while they're in transit. Some examples could be airlines, railway lines or cruise ships. The length of time that people travel could be an hour up to a number of days in a row. So you can imagine that the types of services and the standards of services can vary greatly. Lastly, we come to outdoor catering, also known as event catering. This is often used for major events where food and drink need to be provided for guests and clients. Even though it is referred to as outdoor catering, many of its events actually take place inside. This is the end of our brief insight into the main sectors of the food and beverage service industry. Next, we'll be exploring food and beverage service methods.